Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar is about creating watercolor style illustrations in Clip City Paint presented by Simone Ferriero. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the go to webinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. Webinar will be recorded. Recorded will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Fahim Nias, Joanna Brower, Maria Guignanes, myself, and Simone Ferriero. For those of you who are joining us today for the very first time, and I've never heard about Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash and, and graphicsly.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Simone Ferriero and his presentation, Creating Watercolor Style Illustrations in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Simona, uh, Sims Art on the internet, and uh, I'll show you basically how to make watercolor style um, with with my current uh, style. Uh, and uh, I will start showing you this picture. I mean, this is the picture that I will show you uh, that I will work on. And uh, this is the final uh, the final look of the picture. Uh, but I saved different stages that I would like to show you, and uh, in every stage I will show uh, how I reach the specific uh, look that we need before proceeding to the next stage. So this is the final look, but the picture started like this. This is the sketch part, where usually I lay down uh, every uh, every kind of element in the picture. I try to compose the picture, but as you can see between the um, the sketch part and the final look, there is a, there is quite a lot of difference. So for the sketch part, I use my brush um, that is uh, that I made. It's called Smooth Pencil, and it has a slight texture um, like like this. And this is the brush that I like to use for for my sketch because I like to work with this kind of look. Um, uh, for for my uh, for my illustrations, um, the brushes uh, that uh, I, I made uh, I made all these brushes and uh, I fine tuned them in a way that they work specifically for my style. So uh, during the sketch part, as you can see, I try to lay down the main composition. In this case, we have four characters around a center element that is another the fifth character that is a bird. And now I will show you how basically this. Uh, I, I will quickly sketch a little bit, so you can see how the brush uh, works and how I normally sketch. And then we will quickly proceed to the second part uh, where I lay down the colors. So I'll make a new layer and I will hide the sketch. And usually this is how it works. I, I start sketching the characters using this brush uh, like this. Um, and now I will just do a quick example, but of course, like uh, it takes a while. This is the this is a part that usually takes a while because you have to figure out um, what to draw, how to draw it. And I like usually um, I like, for example, to use a, a soft brush uh, to erase my pencil because it's kind of like using uh, an eraser instead of using Ctrl Z a lot. I rather prefer uh, leaving uh, a more natural um, look to my picture. So I, I like to erase instead of Ctrl Z continuously. Um, also, uh, in this part, I search for reference. Reference that will be used in a second in a second moment for different purpose, like uh, for the color, for the mood, or the pose of the characters. Um, I search a reference on the internet or like anywhere I can find something interesting. 
for for my uh, final work. Uh, so as you can see, the look of this brush is kind of like a charcoal uh, slash something like uh, a very soft pencil. And I like because it's not very sharp and it's not too grainy. Uh, I like to, to work like this because um, it gives also, uh, using a, a slight texture, gives me also um, the sense of uh, detail that I want to reach. When you use a, a brush that is a little bit too uh, sharp, uh, often it's hard to say when you're working uh, on too many details. The fact that this brush is a little bit rough allows me to not go too much into detail and to keep um, the, uh, the proportion between the uh, elements a little bit more uh, under control. Uh, so I, I like to use a, a brush, for example, without changing too much the size. Uh, so I, I don't work on super small details, for example, uh, but the brush size will give me basically the um, uh, the idea of what is the smallest detail that I will reach. In this case, for example, I will not go smaller than a thirty than this thirty pixel um, uh, line. And yeah, this is basically how I sketch. Uh, of course, the sketch can go on and on for hours or minutes, depending on how inspired uh, or how clearly I envision uh, the, um, uh, the the whole picture. When I'm satisfied with the sketch, usually I start correcting the sketch and I will show you how it looks. So let's say that we finally are, uh, get here. Uh, I, I sometimes start selecting the characters with a, uh, with a lasso tool for example, and if I think that a character should be a little bit bigger, I, I change the size and uh, and I recompose the picture. This is a very messy part, but it's important because like a sketch, the sketch, the sketch part is where you don't want to be constra constrained too much to a specific kind of um, shape or uh, kind of you you want to be free as much as possible. Okay, so. After I make a, a very rough sketch, I start cleaning it up and making a few changes. So I saved some steps to show you. Um, for example, we have a first stage where I redraw re, uh, the whole picture a little bit more precisely, as you can see, using always the same brush. So basically what I do is put a layer on top of the sketch. I low down the opacity. And I start cleaning it up. So I make sure that the picture is a little bit cleaner and I start cleaning up every possible uh, mistake. But sometimes uh, even after you clean up the picture, uh, you're not fully satisfied with the look. So what I do is change again, uh, sometimes the element. And on the new cleaned version, I start adjusting and repeating this process again and again until I'm satisfied. So I will quickly show you uh, some stages. So this is the sketch that I showed you. And then I moved to this and then I re, uh, redraw again uh, the sketch like this. Finally, I added some new elements as you can see the palm tree here in the corner. Uh, because I think that this will make a better composition. Um, and then the final step was a clean line art. So this is the line art that I was satisfied with. And I, um, on this line art, uh, basically, we, I will show you now how I start coloring. So let's move to the next step. That is this one. So this is the line art that we had in the previous step. What I do is add a new layer. Uh, I add a new layer on the bottom of the line art and I start using my brush, uh, a watercolor brush. Um, I start painting. As you can see, this watercolor brush has a little edge around 
the around the shape so it adds a little edge that resemble a watercolor uh, a watercolor look before I start actually using this watercolor um, this watercolor brush I like to use a normal airbrush and a normal brush flat uh, to create an undertone of the picture. This is a very important part because if you start from uh, from a picture without any undertone, sometimes I feel like the all the colors don't mix very well. So what I do is create a new layer and fill it with a base color. Like in this case, I use this 10 color here. So I will show you. This is the 10 color. And then what I do is simply uh, with, a, with an airbrush, for example, I start, now I'll go to check. Uh, I start coloring using the colors uh, uh, that maybe I found on a reference or the colors that I want with an airbrush. I start airbrushing the picture. So it's like a color wash. And this is a very important part actually, uh, because to give a watercolor effect that I really enjoy uh, on my illustrations, uh, I think the best thing to do is start with a similar process to a, an actual watercolor um, uh, painting, like a traditional one. And usually when you start a painting with watercolors, what you want to do at the beginning is um, making an undertone. So you start washing your, um, your picture with, uh, with splashes of color using a lot of water. And then you um, you you start like uh, creating the general mood of the picture. So what I do is now uh, I'm adding, as you can see, like layers using the airbrush. I, I'm, I'm creating a, a base tone of the picture that already gives the mood, the colors that I will use uh, in the in during the illustration, of course, uh, it's um, uh, things can change during the process. It's not like this is written in the stone. And working digital actually helps a lot on this. You can uh, change, you can change your idea after and revert your process. Once you have the undertone laid down, uh, what I do is. Uh, for example, uh, the undertone, I can make a, a, spe a specific undertone, for example, on the characters. So for example, I start with a, with a color like this. So this, of course, I will now show you quickly, but uh, sometimes I paint the characters with a specific undertone, maybe some sometimes different from the general undertone to create a contrast between uh, between the background and the characters, because I want the characters to stand out. So uh, as you can see now, I'm uh, creating an undertone, uh, maybe actually with a different color, something like this. Um, and once we have the undertone um, laid down, I start painting. Okay, so I will quickly make an undertone on this character. Now that I have the undertone laid down, I use the watercolor brush. And now I check the final look because of course, like I had to think about this. And with the watercolor brush, I basically just paint the area, kind of like when you use a normal brush. So I don't like to use selections, I don't like to make it too perfect. And this is another thing that I think is very important when you work with watercolor style or with any style that actually wants to be a little bit more traditional looking. Um, embrace the, I like to embrace the, the imperfections. I like to embrace, include inside my process, the, the fact that the the areas that I paint or some brush strokes might not be perfect, so something might bleed, uh, and this this is all important, uh, and this all gives that kind of traditional look, and I think it's it's very important. Now, uh, an important thing is that I'm working on a single layer, so 
the undertone and the watercolor layer are on the same layer. You can use different layers. I like to use on the same layer. Uh, I, I like to work on a one layer because it's easier for me and actually seems more traditional looking. Uh, but another important thing to mention is that um, I instead I, I like to use different um, I like to use different uh, uh, blending modes. So in this case, for example, I was using hard light, but I can switch sometimes to multiply if I want uh, the the color to uh, mix with the background, with the, with the uh, with the layer in a different way. Uh, color blending modes are very important and are a huge part of my process. Now, I, as you can see, with multiply, her skin becomes a little bit too dark, so you have to be very careful of the color you pick. Uh, in this case, I, I picked a little bit lighter skin tone, and I'm painting. Uh, the brush will do the rest. Will add a little bit of edge and also will um, blend with the background because we are in multiply. But for example, I can switch also to uh, overlay sometimes. So for example, with overlay, uh, you can do like uh, hi highlights uh, here and there on your piece uh, or uh, actually make, it, make some areas a little bit darker uh, according to the color that you pick. Now, after I work for hours on this uh, background, uh, on this color, the look will be more, most likely something like this. In this piece, as you can see, I used, uh, I, I'm showing you literally uh, every uh, step that I used. So for example, for these shadows, I used multiply with a kind of like, uh, magenta color. Now I will just make a simple shadow here, but you get it. As you can see, uh, with multiply, you can do the shadows, for example, or uh, in this part here, uh, I use maybe hard light that I like a lot uh, to make, um, of course, the colors are very important, to make some shadows here and there, to make to give some texture on the floor uh, on the sand and i continue like this until i'm satisfied with my uh with my shadows so this is um for example on the on the water i used a blue tone with hard light or multiply Sometimes the, the effects can be very close to each other. So, yeah. As you can see, I added some details on the water here and there. And this is the final look of the picture. Um, once we complete the flat tones, uh, I make sometimes an overpaint layer. So the overpaint layer is a moment uh, is is a layer that is on top of the line art uh, and on top of the flat colors. And I add, for example, tiny details like this uh, small reflection in the eyes of the bird. Uh, I will show. I in this case I used a normal brush, like the blending mode was set on normal, and I just paint like this. See, this is how I uh, I make an overpaint. You can add more uh, details, like if you want to cover the line art in some specific areas, like let's say the the light of this candle, or some I don't know, so, for example, some highlights on the palm tree. Uh, you you can do this on an overpaint layer, so you can still revert the process. You still you now have you can erase and the line art will show uh, show again, show it up again. Okay, once I'm satisfied with these flat tones, with the overpaint and everything else, what I do is uh, merge everything together on a new layer. So I will show you how this looks. Now, this 
is the merged version. So it's very similar to what we had before, but it's all together. So line art, undertone, and uh, overpaint are in one single layer merged together. I like to work like this because it gives me mo the most traditional kind of look. As you can see, there are some difference between the previous stage and the next stage. It's basically just me painting with uh, my watercolor brush, some areas here and there using different blending modes. So for example, to give these highlights of the uh, bonfire on the, on, the, on the sand, I used a yellow color set on hard light. And as you can see, I start painting the lights on the on the sand. For example, in this part, as you can see, it's a very bright yellow for uh, the fire, the part, the inner part of the fire. I use overlay for this part. Actually, I think I used glow dodge. To be fair. Yeah, something, as you can see, something like this. You can use, you can play with blending modes and see which one actually works the best in the area that you're working on. Um, I used, for example, uh, overlay here on this candle to make some highlights. I'm showing you some uh, highlights here and there. Uh, they are not exactly what I did. Uh, but I, I want to show in other areas. But basically, the look that I reached is reached this way, adding using different color blending modes in the different areas according to the kind of look that I want to give. Sometimes I even use normal. That is basically the most the, the one that helps me to just cover some areas. So, for example, with normal, you can just pick a color and just paint like like this, uh, but you have to be careful because if you go over uh, the line, it will cover it. So for example, you can use it in this part here to make the light of the bonfire on the, on the sand. Um, or as you can see here on the hair of this character, I add a highlight, so I used glow dodge and then I made the highlight like this. When you use glow dodge you have to be careful of the color you pick because it's a very aggressive kind of uh, blending mode and you want to be sure that it's it's the right color or it could it could easily destroy the color underneath. So, uh, for example, here I use the glow dodge to make the highlights. And then, for example, here, as you can see, I made some uh, fire um, sparkles um, with the same effect. You have to pick the right color and you can make some sparkles from the fire here and there. And I continue adding layers and layers using like uh, only the brush on the same layer. I keep painting over and over until I reach uh, the, the level of detail that I like. So now I will quickly show you the next steps. So there is a, this is the next step that I reached. Uh, after hours of painting, uh, this is where I, uh, where I've, um, this is this is how the picture looked, and as you can see, for example, around the the around the um, candle, I added with overlay a glow, as you can see here. But I can do on the side so you can see how this looks. See, and uh, I used overlay on the 
stone to make some highlights of the of the candle on the stone and i made more effects of hi highlights here and there on the whole picture also i add some details uh on the water but the another important thing is that the stage before was more magenta and the stage after was a little bit more into the teal. What I did was using a normal default brush set on color. And then I picked the color that I want to, uh, that I want to use for the specific area and that I was not satisfied with. And so I, this, this is the color that we had at the beginning. But with color, I just painted over to change the color. So you can use a blending modes like this to, to switch to a different kind of color if you're if you don't like it, or if, if you wanna if you wanna change something here and there. And the final look after I did this is this. I decided to leave, as you can see here in detail, I decided to leave some parts with the old color to create vibrancy because there is a magenta tone and then a teal tone and close to each other. I like to go sometimes a little bit uh, randomly. I left some uh, parts with the old color and this created more vibrancy on the picture. Now, after uh, many other stages, I add, for example, in this stage, I added some a water line, as you can see before and after. I will show you how I add this water line with watercolor brush and a color that is into the blue. I just painted like with a normal blending mode for this brush, I painted the water line. Now I will do other, other water line here and there just to show you. But this is how I did. And then after this, I keep painting over and I reach the next step where I decided, where I made the effect on the water. The effect on the water, uh, it was achieved with the same kind of style that I used so far. So overlay, and then, I painted over the lines of the water like this. Of course, it's always a mix between overlay, normal, hard light, uh, soft light, multiply, and all the blending modes. It really depends on the on the part that you're trying to to color and how you want to. Your, how you want your brush to interact with the with the bottom layer, uh, with the layer you're painting on. Um, another thing that I did was, of course, you don't have to stick on one layer. Uh, for example, to achieve this water effect, what I did was create a new layer on top and paint it with with a color like this. Then I erased all the overlapping parts like so. And this is a, one of the perks of working in digital. You can actually use more than one layer. Uh, I tend to use just one layer for the majority of the picture, but of course like like I try to be open, of course, to uh, to different kind of process. Um, and what I uh, once I selected when once I painted the whole picture with the whole area of the water with this tone, I uh, lowered the opacity like this, and then with the brush, with watercolor brush set on a transparent uh, color. As you can see, I selected the transparency here on this color palette here. I erased creating like ripples 
and holes in this layer. And this will made this this will create this water reflections. As you can see, that is pretty pretty nice looking. Uh, of course, like uh, I, there is a lot of back and forth, a trial and error, see what works and what doesn't work. But the final look is this. So when I reached this this level, I was like, yeah, okay, this one is good. So let's move on to the next step. That is this one where I add the highlight in the middle. That basically is also the core idea of the picture. So they are summoning this, they are performing uh, uh, some magic on the Carter in the middle. And so this was an important part. I mean, probably you already understand after I explained all the process so far, how I achieved this. For example, for the circle, a magic circle in the middle, I used um, I used color dodge or glow dodge actually, with the specific color that I wanted. And I made the the, the magic uh, runes and lights here and there like this. So I made then some highlights on the clothes of the characters so they look more into the scene and it looks like the light is interacting with them. So I used overlay with the same color that I used for the circle. And I made some highlights like this or like this. I, I will just uh, quickly show you how you can add some highlights on your picture. And since the brush has a texture, the texture will interact with the bottom texture, creating an even more uh, strong textures in some parts, which helps to give the watercolor effect. Another thing important to mention is that when you use this kind of brush, that has some transparency in it, you have to make sure that you don't lift your pen from your um, from your screen before you complete the area that you want to color. This is a little bit tricky, but you will get used to it. So for example, if I want to paint, let me show you an example. If I want to paint uh, this, highlight, this blue highlight on the clothes, okay? If I make a stroke and I lift, and then I make another stroke and I lift, and then I make another one and I lift, as you can see, we can we can see the overlapping. And this is, this is kind of ugly. So what you wanna do is select the right color and make sure that in one single stroke, you color the whole area. So you don't see the overlapping lines like so. And then once I, I was happy with the look of this picture, I moved of this stage actually, I moved to the next step where I add some effects. So as you can see, the effects that I add are most mostly uh, focused in the middle because what I wanted to do is make sure that the attention of the, of the viewer was captured i'm going to show, like in this direction so i want to make sure that people will really focus their attention on the center element and to add this glow effect what i did was i will show you the previous step with the with the airbrush set on overlay or color dodge according to the kind of look that I want to give. I made some highlights like this, but what I usually do is duplicate the layer. So I have now two layers that are identical. On the top layer, 
I apply the effect like this. Okay. And then maybe I use lighten to create a little bit of haze. And when I'm happy with this, I just use the eraser to erase the effect in the parts that I don't like. I can use a hard edge eraser to erase it from, from this character like this. Or I can use a, so a soft edge eraser to erase it a little bit in a soft way. So I bring back the bottom layer that we duplicated in order to apply some effects. And then once I'm happy with this, I will have, I will have two layers. The top one will have some holes in it and the bottom one will be just flat. So what I do is use a shortcut, Alt, Control, Shift, E, that I assigned for create a new layer merging everything together. So now I have a third layer with everything merged and I merge this layer with the bottom one that has a hole in it. And now I have a new layer with the effect, a lot, um, with the effect on it. So two layer, the previous one and the next one. And then I continue painting. If I need, I will duplicate again, apply new effect, make a new merge layer and continue and so on and on and on until I'm happy with it. Seems more complicated to explain than to do it actually, uh, but I literally use shortcuts all the time. So it's very quick. I can do just with a, with a few clicks. And once you get used to shortcut, um, a lot of this process uh, will be very simple. So I add more highlights using glow. I add glow. Let me see now how the next step. As you can see, it's not exactly uh, the, the same look, but the process is the same. The look that I went for is this one. So I used a more teal actually color for the glo uh, glow for the overlay, but most likely, as you can see, uh, it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, I made some highlights using glow or overlay, depending on the color that I want to reach. And on the side, I made a small glow, more orange, as you can see. So what I do is use the airbrush, select a, an orange tone, and set, the, and set the brush blending mode on overlay. And then I paint the red tone. And also, sometimes I like to use lighten or screen to, to create haze, like so. So this will actually make lighter even the line art and give a more painterly effect. It's kind of like using a real airbrush. It covers everything. So after uh, using the airbrush and a watercolor brush in, um, in these different blending modes like overlay, color dodge or um, soft light uh, screen and uh, this kind of effects. For example, around the edge, I like to use overlay. As you can see, it's a little bit darker in the next step. So what I do is use overlay and a dark color and and with the airbrush, as you can see, we can make a little darkened edge. So the attention of the viewer will be focused in the middle other than the edges. And this is how I reached the next uh, step where I actually also applied an effect. As you can see, it's a little bit desaturated. So I applied some color correction like a uh, saturation uh, correction or color balance. I will show you how to do it. New correction, right click on the layer, new correction layer, hue, saturation, and luminosity. I will show you on the previous stage though, so you can see. So we have a colored picture 
that I didn't like the, it, it, it was a little bit too saturated. So new correction layer, huge saturation luminosity, and I lowered a little bit of saturation like this. And then you can apply, for example, new layer, new correction layer, brightness and contrast, and give a boost of contrast, for example, or lower lower a little bit the, the, the brightness. Once you're happy with the look, this is what I was happy with. Uh, probably here I used also a new correction layer, color balance where you can play with the mid half tone shadow and highlights tones of the picture so for example i can make it more cyan the mid tones or half tones uh you can make you can put a little bit more green more magenta you you here you can experiment a little bit with the mood of the picture so a little bit more red in the half tones maybe a little bit more cyan in the shadows and the highlights may be a little bit more reddish. Okay. After this, kind, this is the main kind of color effects that I use. And this is how it looks after all this color correction. And then I applied few, in the last step, I applied few other correction painting on it. So as you can see, I made this paper a little bit darker. I add some, um, some effects here on the hat, like using blue, a cyan tone. Set on normal, maybe? Yes. Or we can set it on overlay and make it like this. I applied some final effects. Once I'm happy with this, it's almost done, basically, because this is almost complete. So we move to the next step, that is color correction. So this is the next step, and basically the final step. Um, this is where I was at the end of the previous step, step, and then I applied some color corrections, but they were local color corrections. So in order to apply these corrections, I made the selection of the characters. So I will have, for example, the selection of this character. This character here, I made a new layer. And with a normal default brush, uh, the, the, without any transparency, I just selected the character. I will show you. I just selected the character. So for example, here, this one, I make a new layer and I select the character. I will just show you an example of selection. I just make a layer like this, a new layer. And I will use this layer as selection for the character. Then you can control click on the layer and uh, your colors will become actually a selection. That's why you have to be sure that you're using a brush that has no opacity, no transparency. And with these selections, I applied some effects like For example, I made the background a little bit darker. So I selected the characters like this, one, two, three, four, and five. And then I invert the selection and I applied this layer that is, is a blue layer, as you can see like this, a little bit cyan layer set on hard light. In this way, I give the whole background a look, a little bit more cyan look, and it will make the characters look more uh, reddish, more warm compared to the background. And with these selections done, I can I also made uh, one of the characters a little bit darker, as you can see here on the bottom, or the center character a little bit more blue. So it looks like it's more affected than the others by the 
the over by the overall light around him. And then I made with these selections, I made a color and co a contrast uh, uh, layer using the ma uh, using a mask where um, I one sec guys uh, I saved. So I'm waiting for it to find <laughs> by mistake. I saved uh, one sec. It will be done soon. But uh, I applied a contrast layer. Gee, this would take a while. Um, OK, one second. It, the file is pretty big. So I, I actually am working on a 6,000 by 8,000 pixel picture. And it's very important to understand that if you want to print your uh, picture later, you, you want to make sure that you work on a large canvas. Uh, this way, uh, you will not have any problem uh, if you want to print. For example, this picture can be printed on very large canvas. And uh, it's very important to, um, to work on the right resolution. Also, I'm working on 300 DPI. And uh, this uh, is, a, is a standard for printing. Another, uh, another thing that I like to do is uh, duplicate the window. So I will show you in a second. And take a look uh, on the Navigator um, all the time. Uh, Navigator seems like a secondary thing, but it's something that I use quite a lot because it's a small version of your artwork and helps you to keep under control your overall composition and a, give you a glimpse of what the picture looks like from far away. Uh, working too much zoomed in, it's something that you don't want to do. Uh, because if you work so zoomed in, you may lose track of your overall composition. And this is something that it has to be avoided uh, as, as much as possible. Um, I will. I'm I'm still waiting for this to finish saving. Uh, the, large, the file is very large and it has like a lot of layers, so it takes um, a second to save. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, I can um, uh, I I want to talk uh, to you about uh, the time lapse that I'm going to show you once I finish this. So what I do, uh, meanwhile, I work on my on my picture. Uh, is create a time lapse. You know what? I have an idea. Maybe we can. One second. Instead of waiting for this to finish saving, I can close the program. Quickly. Okay. And open it again. It will be faster. Because the picture is very large. So I'll show you quickly. Okay, so once I make the final steps, um, I use the selections to make some contrast on the single characters. So as you can see, I made this layer that is a global characters contrast. And I use the selection of the characters, I inverted the selection, and then I right click, new correction layer, brightness and contrast, and it will automatically create a brightness and contrast layer that will only affect the background. So I can play with the luminosity, the brightness and contrast of the background. And the next step is select local contrast on the single character. So I use the selection of this character, right click, new correction layer, brightness and contrast. And I can turn up and down the contrast of a single character. Once I'm happy with all the corrections, I merge everything together on the final step. And this is how the picture looks. As you can see, I applied just a final lumin uh, brightness and contrast effect on the picture. This is just uh, final touches. And the picture is, uh, is finished. Another thing that I like to do 
is to keep a re the original sketch on top of everything. This is very important because you don't want to lose track of your original idea. Even if the idea changes a lot during the whole process that I just showed you, you want to make sure that the mood of the picture that you had in mind at the beginning is not lost. You can change it, but not lose it uh, because it will, it will keep alive your picture. It will keep the freshness of the illustration uh, as high as possible. Um, now I want to show you uh, another thing that I like to use a lot before I finish this uh, st step of the webinar and is the color history. This is a layer that I use quite often and gives you a glimpse of the palette that you're using. I often use uh, this color history layer uh, tool uh, to check out what colors I'm picking. And if I see that colors are not there, I like to make sure that the color palette shown here, it's consistent. And this will give me a glimpse if I'm using a consistent kind of color palette. Of course, I use uh, a lot the brush uh, palette where, for example, with the watercolor brush, you can use watercolor edge. Uh, this option here, turned on and off, allows you to, to, to have a preview of your edge before or after the brush stroke. So in this case, it will, if you click process after brush stroke, it will process the edge after. If you click, if you deselect this, it will make the brush stroke, the edge, it will make it during your brush stroke. Um, performance wise, if you're working on high resolution, it's better if you keep this on. So after you make your color area, Clip Studio will keep a second and apply the edge. And this is just a tip that I wanted to give you. Um, and one last thing is how to duplicate the, 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 how to duplicate the canvas. This is a thing that I do 100% of the time. So having a duplicate, if you have multiple screens, it's good to have a second screen with your picture duplicated, not only because you can record your process there, but because you can take a look to your whole picture, kind of like the navigator, but in a larger scale. So if you click on window, canvas, new window, the picture will be duplicated. And you can bring this picture, now I will show you on this, uh, on this screen, but normally I dr drag this picture on a second screen. So you select a picture, put somewhere on your second screen, click on this button here on the navigator that is fit to screen, and you have an overall look of your picture. Every time you paint on this picture, after brush stroke, the brush stroke will appear on your second picture. And this is a good way to uh, have a, a picture that you can screen record if you're, if you're doing a time lapse and to check out your picture overall. I really hope that this process will make uh, will make you uh, will inspire you. And uh, I don't know. Uh, this is it basically. So I leave. Uh, I, I think we can go with the question and answer, right? <laughs> okay. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so we'll just answer very few of the most asked questions. Um, yes. I think you can probably imagine what the most asked questions is question is um what's the brush? what's your brushes <laughs> and, do you offer, and do you offer them somewhere can people download your brushes somewhere yes uh i have my brushes on my patreon uh so my you will find me on patreon and um it's uh patreon.com slash sims if you go there there's a post where you can download the whole brush set do, have you made all of the, the brushes by yourself or have you used the standard brushes and transformed them, used someone else's brushes, transformed them? Um, I used uh, some texture taken, I can't even remember where and how, uh, but most likely they are custom made because I customized uh, with my specific needs. So every every option 
is uh, customized and made sure that it works perfectly for my process. Okay, great. Um, do you usually use only textured brushes or also textured canvases? I actually not do this all the time. For example, I'm working on a web comic and I use this brush that is very cool that I really enjoy. Uh, that allows me to do uh, the line art that is extremely clean like this. And then I can feel using the, uh, I can quickly feel the areas. So I'm working on a webtoon right now. And this is the brush that I'm using for my comic. And you can do so stuff depends. like this that is cleaner. Mm. So it depends on what you're using. Yes, like for my illustration, I like... use mainly the pencil brush and the watercolor brush and the airbrush. Okay, all right. Um, how long does it usually take you to finish a piece? This piece specifically took me around 10 hours. That's the average. Can take a little bit less if I'm super, super inspired or, or if the picture uh, is a little bit more simple and can take more if I encounter a lot of problems. Usually what I tend to do though is if I'm satisfied with a picture, uh, I tend to finalize and not stay too much on a picture uh, because I like to keep it fresh. Hmm. Okay. Um, just a second. Do you have any, any experience with traditional watercolor? Yes. Uh, I used to make watercolors illustration on my molluskin using uh brush like a uh, watercolor brushes and uh, yeah so i mean i made different projects like mm. that yeah okay and you as you use digital art and a lot of artists decide to use lots of different color uh, lots of different layers with different blending modes but you decided to stay on one layer and put the blending modes on the brushes how did yes. you get there how uh, did you decide that that's the way for you I think it's because it's the most convenient way uh, in terms of um, in terms of per performance, because uh, working on a lot of layers can be extremely confusing. And also, I think that the problem is that I don't want to be obsessed with the precision. So I like the idea that I can mess up a little bit, kind of like I, I'm working on a traditional media. Uh, working on a lot of layers is a little bit sometimes uh, like gives me OCD. So you tend to <laughs> uh, you tend to be too precise. You you tend to check out your layers every two seconds. That's that's a lot of work and distracts me from the focal point that is make a cool illustration. Okay, um, you, for this piece you had a like the the beige, orangey, pinkish. Uh, tinted background. Um, do you usually use colored backgrounds? Or, and are there always this kind of color? Or how do you decide what like, color the background is? I like, okay, I used for a couple, let's say one year and a half, a very limited color palette. Mm -hmm. That is the color palette that actually I'm using for my webtoon as well. And for my project, um, the project that I started a year ago, and then now it's a webtoon, I use a very limited color palette. And I stay I sticked on that color palette for a long time. And uh, it, I have this color palette right here. But uh, I recently like to use uh, colors that are slightly different. I think that I stay on very uh, tan colors, uh, teals and orange even now. But I, I'm taking a little bit more uh, freedom and uh, I like to search for reference and try new palettes. Okay. All right. I think we need to call it quits. Could you just really, really quickly write down at best on the canvas where your Patreon is? Yes. Just so that everyone can see it and take note. <laughs> okay. My Patreon is patreon dot com slash thems this is okay. my patreon um yeah 
uh, just to answer to the guy to the guy that asked me about the different color palette. This is my Instagram, instagram.com slash sims.art. And as you can see, for example, for this picture, I like to use a completely different palette that is purple and yellow. Uh, that is very different. So yeah, I, I like to use different color palettes. But of course, naturally, I tend to go towards color that I like, like teal, orange, red, uh, this kind of colors here. How come you how come you you're drawing so many witches these days? It's because I don't know. I wanted to work on a on a project. That I like to work on consistent projects. I think this is something that I have uh, that I always do since I was in art college. And uh, working on a project helps me to focus on something, to keep being inspired, to avoid uh, art block. That is something that exists. And um, also helps my audience to follow a uh, kind of a narrative about my work. So they can uh, kind of see a, a project, um, a line of thoughts that they can follow. And I, and, I, and, I like to, and I like to do this for my social media and personal projects. Do, do you have your, your comic open by chance? I have my comic uh, pilot that uh, is right here on Webtoons. Uh, so if you search Falling in the Blue on Webtoons, Sims Art is my nickname there, you will find a pilot of my comic. Currently, I'm working on the actual comic that will be officially published very soon, uh, but this is the pilot. So if you want to check out uh, a glimpse of the universe that I'm creating, it's here. Okay. Thank you very much. I think I think we need You're to welcome. call it quit though, but it was super right. interesting and I'm sure we all learned a lot. And yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. Hello guys. So thank you so much. Um thank you to all the attendees who have been um sharing their experience and participating on Simone's webinar. For more information, uh, learn more about Clip Studio Paint, please visit our website, clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel of Celsius Web and Graphicsly. So you will see, you, can, you will be able to watch uh, the recording of the webinar if you miss something. And also for more information about Simone, uh, follow him on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. So, thank you so much, Simone. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna. You're welcome. So, thank you guys, so all the attendees, and we hope to see you in, again on our next webinar. So, stay tuned on our social media, Graphicsly, Cliff Studio Paint, and welcome. Thank you so much. See you in our next one. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.